Welcome to the UChem tutorial on learning Lewis dots. In this tutorial, we're going to use the example of diatomic elements, learn why some elements are diatomic, and in the process, we are going to get practice in drawing Lewis dot structures. So let's begin by identifying the diatomic elements, atoms. Okay, so why are some of these diatomic? So let's examine fluorine. So if you look at the electron configuration for fluorine, what you find is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And if we identify the valence electrons, these are the outer electrons that are involved in bonding, we'll find that there are seven of those valence electrons. Now let's look at neon, its nearest noble gas. That has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And if you look at the valence electrons here for neon, what you'll see is that we have a full shell. We cannot fit any more electrons into that shell. And so neon is a noble gas, it's unreactive, and we can use this as an example of what a Lewis dot structure would look like for one that is full in its outer shell. So we can do that if I look at the 2s, I'm diagramming the valence electrons here and I can put two dots for those two electrons that are found in the 2s. And then I can keep on going by drawing some more electrons, one for each of the p orbitals, those 2p orbitals, and then I'm going to pair them. And when I'm done, those eight dots around the outside of neon represent the valent shell for that element. Now let's take a look at fluorine and see how that stacks up when we look at its valent shell. So I'm going to put in the two S2 electrons and then continue to add. So there are the first three and then I'm going to pair two of them and it turns out in fluorine I'm missing one electron in order to give it a full eight or a full octet. So let me draw another one. Here's another fluorine, and I filled its 2s, and now I'm looking at those last five electrons, and I've paired up to give me the rest of that. Now, if I take a look at those two fluorines next to each other, I can see something very interesting. I can see that if I look all the way around one fluorine atom there, and I circle all of the electrons around it, and I also include the one from its neighboring fluorine, what I'll find is a total of eight. And that looks a little like the neon over there on the right. So I can also do that for the other fluorine on the left. And so if you cover up one fluorine and you just look at one of those, look at the yellow circle or you look at the orange circle, what you're going to see is a full octet for either one of the fluorines because of that shared pair. And so what we see here actually is the formation of a bond. We can show this bond in Lewis dot diagrams by a pair of electrons located between the atoms like I do with those overlaps with the orange and yellow on the left or because it's just simpler we draw a bond, a single dashed line to represent two shared electrons or a pair of bonding electrons within one um, molecule. So I'm going to call those bonding electrons, those two that are shared, and those are the same as those ones over there on the left. If I look at these other electrons that are belonging only to one of the atoms, we call these lone pair electrons. So why do we have these diatomic elements? Well, sharing electrons allows our atoms to complete their valence shells. So fluorine is deficient by one to be like a noble gas. So we can add one by having it share uh, an electron with a neighboring element in a compound. Okay. All right, so let's do some more examples and also look at these valence shells so that we can understand a little bit more about how we complete them. So complete valence shells for hydrogen and helium are just that one little shell. All right, all these elements have one shell that they need to fill and that's the 1s orbital. So there are two electrons only that fit there. So we say that these are complete with a duet. Now period two these have a valence shell of 2s2, 2p6 in their electron configuration, so they need eight or they need an octet in order to be like the noble gases, eight electrons in their outer shell. 
Now, below period two on the table, they have the NS2, whatever level it is, NP6. All right, and so that would be an octet if it's a main group element. If I'm a transition metal element, I have the NS2 and then I have N minus one D10. That means that one lower shell and that's the D10s that fill across the transition series. And then you go into the main group again and you're going to start filling those P orbitals. So these elements, those in periods below period two on the table, because they have those D orbitals available, these can have a expanded octets. So at the very, very minimum, they need an octet. So that means that they can have greater than eight electrons, but eight is the very, very minimum. So if you look, the things we're looking for in Lewis stru structures are duets and octets. Duets for hydrogen and helium, octets for anything larger, and we can have expanded octets, but remember we have to have a minimum of eight and then those in periods below two can have an expanded octet. Now let me do some more examples and take a look at some more structures. Let's do hydrogen. So if I draw one hydrogen, it has one poor little lonely electron there. If I draw it next to another hydrogen atom, I can have them fill their duet. And I can see that by circling each atom and looking to see whether I can find around it the right number of electrons to fill the valence shell. All right, so let's take a look at that and that's going to be a single bond, all right, between hydrogen. That's what we saw also in fluorine. All right, so one shared pair, one single bond. Now let's look at oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons, okay, in one oxygen, 12 valence electrons with two oxygens. It's very important when you are drawing molecules to always know how many valence electrons you have to distribute. So what we will do here is we'll draw our oxygens and we will have them connected by the, the electrons they have in common, but first I need to fill in the six electrons from the first one and the six electrons from the second one. And then after I do that, then I can look to see whether I have an octet between them. So if oxygen were to share at this point and draw a single bond between there, and I were to count the electrons around the blue oxygen over here, I would have a total of those two lone pairs, so that's four, and then I would have those two other electrons, that's six, and then I'd be borrowing one from the neighbor, and that would only be seven. So I will not have filled the shell for that oxygen just by sharing one pair. So what I do instead is I'm going to share two pairs. Okay, and if I do that, then I can see that if I circle around one oxygen, I circle eight electrons, and if I circle around the other, I have an octet for both. This is a double bond. All right, we've now seen that we can share two pairs of electrons, and we call that a double bond. The next example I want to do is nitrogen. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so if I have two of them, I have ten valence electrons. So let's draw nitrogen. If I take nitrogen and I draw its valence electrons, there's five from one and there's five from another. And I can see that even if I use the five that one nitrogen has and one that it might share, a single bond is not enough. So let me get rid of these, and what I can find with nitrogen is that I actually need to pair two sets. All right, so now if I look at my nitrogen and I circle the total electrons with one nitrogen, that lone pair, and then the shared pairs that I have with the other nitrogen atom, I have a total of six shared electrons and two lone pairs, and I have eight. If I look at the other nitrogen, I have the same thing. This is called a triple bond, all right, and with those triple bonds we see octets with my diatomic nitrogen. Okay. All right, so this gives me an example of the formation of single, double, and triple bonds and also the process for determining a Lewis dot structure for something very, very simple. A further video will go over more complicated structures, but this gives you the basics for learning Lewis dots.